Foraging theory is based on the assumption that individual or groups of organisms search for and obtain food in a way that maximizes their energy intake per unit time spent on the search for food. Optimal foraging theory was first formulated in 1966 by R. H. MacArthur and E. R. Pienker, stating that natural selection favors animals whose behavioral strategies maximize their net energy intake per unit time spent foraging. Such time includes both searching for prey and handling, that is, killing and eating it. Foraging is searching for wild food resources. It affects an animal's fitness because it plays an important role in an animal's ability to survive and reproduce. Foraging theory is a branch of behavioral ecology that studies the foraging behavior of animals in response to the environment where the animal lives. Foraging theory concerns activities related to the acquisition of food. It addresses decisions regarding 1. Where to search, 2. When to feed, 3. Which food types to consume, 4. When to terminate feeding, and move on. Optimal foraging theory oft is a behavioral ecology model that helps predict how an animal behaves when searching for food. Although obtaining food provides the animal with energy, searching for and capturing the food require both energy and time. To maximize fitness, an animal adopts a foraging strategy that provides the most benefit or energy for the lowest cost, maximizing the net energy gained. O. F. T. helps predict the best strategy that an animal can use to achieve this goal. Worker bees forage nectar not only for themselves but for their whole hive community. Optimal foraging theory predicts that this bee will forage in a way that will maximize its hive's net yield of energy. Oft is an ecological application of the optimality model. This theory assumes that the most economically advantageous foraging pattern will be selected for in a species through natural selection. When using oft to model foraging behavior, organisms are said to be maximizing a variable known as the currency, such as the most food per unit time. Currency is defined as the unit that is optimized by the animal. It is also a hypothesis of the costs and benefits that are imposed on that animal. For example, a certain forager gains energy from food but incurs the cost of searching for the food, that is, the time and energy spent searching could have been used instead on other endeavors such as finding mates or protecting young. It would be in the animal's best interest to maximize its benefits at the lowest cost. Constraints of the environment are other variable that must be considered. Constraints are defined as factors that can limit the forager's ability to maximize the currency. These limitations can be due to features of the environment or the physiology of the animal and could limit their foraging efficiency. The time that it takes for the forager to travel from the nesting site to the foraging site is an example of a constraint. The maximum number of food items a forager is able to carry back to its nesting site is another example of a constraint. There could also be cognitive constraints on animals, such as limits to learning and memory. The optimal decision rule, or the organism's best foraging strategy, is defined as the decision that maximizes the currency under the constraints of the environment. Identifying the optimal decision rule is the primary goal of the OFT. Possible examples of optimal decision rules could be the optimal number of food items that an animal should carry back to its nesting site or the optimal size of a food item that an animal should feed on. Optimal foraging theory is widely applicable to feeding systems throughout the animal kingdom. Under the oft, any organism of interest can be viewed as a predator that forages prey. There are different classes of predators that organisms fall into and each class has distinct foraging and predation strategies. True predators attack large numbers of prey throughout their life. They kill their prey either immediately or shortly after the attack. They may eat all or only part of their prey. True predators include tigers, lions, whales, sharks, seed-eating birds, ants. Grazers eat only a portion of their prey. They harm the prey but rarely kill it. Grazers include antelope, cattle, and mosquitoes. Parasites, like grazers, eat only a part of their prey or host but rarely the entire organism. They spend all or large portions of their life cycle living in or on a single host.
This intimate relationship is typical of tapeworms, liver flukes, and plant parasites, such as the potato blight. Parasitoids are mainly typical of wasps, order Hymenoptera, and, some flies order Diptera. Eggs are laid inside the larvae of other arthropods which hatch, and consume the host from the inside, killing it. This unusual predator-host relationship is typical of about 10% of all insects. Many viruses that attack single-celled organisms, such as bacteriophages, are also parasitoids. They reproduce inside a single host, that is inevitably killed by the association. One classical version of the optimal foraging theory is, the optimal diet model, which is also known as the pre-choice model, or the contingency model. In this model, the predator encounters different prey items, and decides whether to eat what it has, or search for a more profitable prey item. The model predicts that foragers should ignore low profitability prey items, when more profitable items are present, and abundant. The profitability of a prey item is dependent on several ecological variables. A is the amount of energy, or calories, that a prey item provides the predator. Handling time, H, is the amount of time, it takes the predator to handle the food beginning from the time the predator finds the prey item to, the time the prey item is eaten. The profitability of a prey item is then defined as A divided by, H. Additionally, search time, S, is the amount of time, it takes the predator to find a prey item, and is dependent on the abundance of the food, and the ease of locating it. In this model, the currency is energy intake, per unit time, and the constraints include the actual values of A, H, and S, as well as the fact that, prey items are encountered sequentially. Using these variables, the optimal diet model can predict, how predators choose between two prey types, big prey 1 with energy value A1, and handling time H1, and, small prey 2 with energy value E2, and handling time H2. In order to maximize its overall rate of energy gain, a predator must consider the profitability of the two prey types. If it is assumed that, big prey 1 is more profitable than small prey 2, then E1, by H1, is greater than, E2 by H2. Thus, if the predator encounters prey 1, it should always choose to eat it, because of its higher profitability. It should never bother to go searching for prey 2. However, if the animal encounters prey 2, it should reject it, to look for a more profitable prey 1, unless, the time it would take to find prey 1 is too long, and costly for it, to be worth it. Thus, the animal should eat prey 2 only if, E2 by H2 is greater than, E1 by H1 plus S1, where S1 is the search time for prey 1. Since it is always favorable to choose to eat prey 1, the choice to eat prey 1, is not dependent on the abundance of prey 2. But since the length of S1, that is, how difficult it is to find prey 1, is logically dependent on the density of prey 1, the choice to eat prey 2 is dependent on, the abundance of prey 1. The optimal diet model, also predicts that different types of animals should adopt different diets, based on variations in search time. Animals that have S1s that reach the threshold, are defined as generalists. In nature, generalists include a wide range of prey items in their diet. An example of a generalist is a mouse, which consumes a large variety of seeds, grains, and nuts. In contrast, predators with relatively short S1s, are still better off choosing, to eat only prey 1. These types of animals are defined as specialists, and have very exclusive diets in nature. An example of a specialist is, the koala, which solely consumes eucalyptus leaves. Examples of optimal foraging models in animals. Oyster catcher, muscle feeding provides an example of, how the optimal diet model can be utilized. Oyster catchers forage on mussels, and crack them open with their bills. The constraints on these birds are, the characteristics of the different muscle sizes. While large muscles provide more energy than small muscles, large muscles are harder to crack open due to their thicker shells. This means that, while large muscles have a higher energy content, A, they also have a longer handling time, H. The profitability of any muscle is calculated as A by H. The oyster catchers must decide, which muscle size will provide enough nutrition to outweigh the cost, and energy, required to open it. Thanks for watching. Subscribe us for more MSC notes. Some portions of the notes are given in the description box, for quick reference.